When you believe you've exhausted all options, remember this, you haven't. No matter what you choose to do, there will always be people who find fault with it. Everyone should become rich, famous, and achieve everything they want just to realize that it's not the point. Want to soar? Get a mentor. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. This channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine and help you believe in your Michael Jordan level talent. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Jay Shetty, on how to improve your life and get massive success. Mentor me, Jay. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, take responsibility. Just around two years ago, I had this idea. I wanted to share wisdom at a pace we wanted entertainment. I wanted to share wisdom in a way that it could connect, resonate, and deeply evolve the lives of people all over the world. For 10 years before that, I'd been working with individuals, groups, coaching at universities, companies, and all of these opportunities, but I really wanted to serve and connect with everyone across the world. I wanted to make wisdom accessible to anyone who had one of these. I have one of those. So I was excited, I had the energy, the enthusiasm, and I was pitching my idea to every single company that was online. Now remember, this is before I ever made a single video, before any of you knew who I was. Who is this guy? I applied to not 10, not 20, but 30 online media companies, hoping that one of them would like my series idea. I waited a day, I waited two days, I waited a week. I was rejected by every single one of those companies before interview. None of them invited me for a phone interview. None of them invited me for a video interview. None of them even connected with me in any personal way. That's rude. I said to myself, it doesn't matter. Let's see what else I can do to try and make my goal a reality. What else you got? So I tried to network with people who may be able to give me a chance. I got one answer and one answer only. They said, you're getting older now. Most of the people who want to break into this industry are around 21 years old. Just don't worry about it. Other people said to me, look, you need to go get a media and journalism degree or a master's and then we'll take you seriously. Literally, I was getting rejected from every single person I spoke to, but inside of me, I had this desire, I had this calling, I had this mission, I had this vision that I wanted to share everything that I had learned with people out there. I genuinely tried every single possible method I could to break into the media industry to the point that the only thing that was left that I could try was to start a social media channel. And of course, you know the rest. The most incredible thing is that it reminds me of a really powerful thought from Thomas Edison. He once said, when you believe you've exhausted all options, remember this, you haven't. That thought stayed in my mind the whole time. What I learned from all of this rejection, from all of this failure, from all of these clear no's, was one really important thing. And today, I wanna give that as a gift to you. Me? If you have a dream, you have an idea, you have a vision, we have to take the responsibility to prove our worth before we expect anyone to value our talent. When I started crafting and creating my own videos, teaching myself how to edit, learning how to produce, understanding the mechanics of social media, when I started putting my energy into that space, that's when people started to take notice. That's when people started to listen. That's when things started to happen. This is nice. It's when I decided to take the responsibility for sharing what I was passionate about with the world and not waiting for someone external to validate me or give me permission or allow me to do that, that's what made the difference. If you're feeling you've been going through a lot of rejections, ask yourself this. Is your deeper passion and calling making you want to move further? Number two, have you truly knocked on every single door? And number three, are you working hard on investing in your expertise and passion so that you really have something impactful to offer? Rule number two, know your element, environment, and energy. So for me, my three E's are element, environment, and energy. Everyone has an element that they thrive in. 
If you take someone out of it, their element, they won't be the same. A modern day example would be Michael Jordan. He was incredible at basketball. You took him out of basketball, put him into baseball, no one remembers his career. We're talking about one of the best athletes of all time. Your environment is the environment around you. You can take a fish out of water and give it a beautiful mansion and a Bentley and all the money in the world, but it would die. And that's what we are, like our environment. Everyone needs an environment which they thrive, which we have to craft. Your boss, if you're at work, is never gonna ask you, hey, what, what environment do you succeed in, right? Like, that never happens. So we have to create an environment where we thrive. And then finally, it's energy. We, some of us love high energy environments, high pressure. Some of us succeed in low energy environments and low pressure. Figuring out your energy and the frequency on which you operate best will help you thrive as well. So for me, those are the three E's to really create a thriving environment. Know your element, know your environment, and know your energy. And so at all times, if I see anything going wrong, I'm going, is my element out of alignment? Is my environment out of alignment? Or is my energy out of alignment? And that's a great three question test you can do to yourself when you don't think things are going right. And all you have to do is bring that back into alignment. Rule number three, access your flow state. Flow or flow state is defined as the optimal state of consciousness when we perform at our best, feel at our best, but also at the same time. Ego falls away, time flies, we're conscious but subconsciously experiencing our own art. It's when we're fully immersed, absorbed and addicted to simply creating. Now I'm sure you've all had moments when you felt that, whether you've been playing sports, an instrument, traveling, maybe looking at a beautiful scenic view, or maybe just in a really engaging conversation. But I'm going to share with you how we can experience more flow in our lives because it heightens our sense of joy or curiosity. So the two variables of flow are challenge and ability, and flow is where challenge and ability collide or meet. If your answer to my question earlier is that you often feel bored, it's usually because your skills are higher than your challenge. Everything seems easy, it's not exciting anymore, there's nothing new you need to learn, and you feel like you can do things effortlessly, but not in a way that excites you or empowers you, but in a way that almost drains you and makes you feel more lethargic and lazy. I'm bored. But let's say you're feeling more stressed. Let's say you're feeling anxious. Let's say you get nervous often. That's usually because the challenge is greater than our skill. The challenge has become so high, it feels like this massive mountain that we're trying to climb and we feel like we're completely carrying the biggest weight on our shoulders and therefore we're feeling the pressure, feeling the strain, feeling that stress. In each of these scenarios, what you're seeing is a disconnect between your challenge and your ability, which is either causing stress or boredom. And there's a really, really simple solution. If you're feeling bored because your skills are higher than your challenge, what you need to do to make life abundant, exciting, thrilling again is raise your challenge. Try new opportunities, go into new arenas, be in new environments, meet new people. What that will force you to do is make you raise your challenge, which allow you to grow, allow you to thrive. And if you're finding that what you experience more often than not is stress, is pressure, is pain, then the way you combat that is by increasing your skill level. Try going on online courses, learn from mentors, go on an apprenticeship, see who you can learn and be coached by and guided by to improve your skills. What that will help you do is meet your challenge with a higher skill set. You'll now be able to walk into a challenge with confidence that you'll know how to navigate the various things the challenge will bring into your life. Flow state is this beautiful space where we completely surrender to the art and allow the energy to truly flow through us. It's something I've personally experienced and want you to experience in your life as well. Rule number four, stop caring what others think. We all feel that rejection kills dreams. We all feel that failure kills dreams. We all feel that people kill dreams. You can't kill my dreams. But actually, there's four words that we say in our heads to ourselves that genuinely have destroyed more dreams than all of those things put together. Those four words are, what will people say? 
What will people say? How many times have you stopped yourself from doing something because you're scared of how people will react? How many times out of the fear of someone else's opinion or criticism have you stopped yourself from doing what you believe in? How many times has someone's perception or perspective stopped you from living your potential? No matter what you choose to do, there will always be people who find fault with it. There will always be people who criticize, complain, who try to bring you down and tell you that what you're doing isn't right. Haters gonna hate. It's crazy that we give up what we most want in life just based on people's opinions. And the crazy thing is, if we're living for other people's opinions, we'll never be right. There'll always be someone with something that they won't agree with. And this is why it's so important that we work with our own conviction. We work on what matters to us. It was Aristotle who told us that there were only three ways to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. And I'm sure none of us want that of our future. Rule number five, focus on true wealth. I believe that wealth is beautiful and brilliant. It can do incredible things in the world when used to make a difference. When we use any wealth that we have to make an impact, to use it to make an influence, to help serve and support the lives of others. But today, I want to talk to you about a different type of rich list. There's more than one. One of my favorite teachings about wealth has been this. You can tell how rich you are by counting the amount of things you have that money cannot buy. There's a beautiful quote by Jim Carrey where he says, I believe that everyone should become rich, famous, and achieve everything they want just to realize that it's not the point. That would be nice. Real wealth, inner wealth, fulfillment, satisfaction, meaning and purpose is a rich list that every single one of us can have and be on. I want you to take a moment to make a list of the things you have that money cannot buy. Maybe it's a beautiful family. Maybe it's an incredible partner. Maybe it's a passion and a drive that you've recently found and discovered for yourself. Maybe it's a recent experience that you had that wasn't really about where you were, but more about who you were with and what you were thinking about. The reason why I'm focusing on this rich list is because this list is something we often forget. It's not on the front page of a magazine. It's not inside the newspapers. It's not on the list online. But this list is one that you can look at every single day to remind yourself how fortunate, how grateful, and how incredible your life truly is. And rule number six, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have a plan. How many of you have a crazy dream or a crazy goal? I want you to write out in the comment section, what is your crazy dream? The dream that keeps you up at night is the real dream you should be chasing. But to chase that dream, to find that dream, to make that dream a reality, you need a strategy, right? A dream without a plan is just a wish. Tony Robbins said that, right? A dream without a plan is just a wish, right? Without a strategy, without a guiding philosophy, without guiding principles, without actually creating a clear plan. I used to have this economics teacher, and I want you to think back to school as well. Maybe you had one. I remember this economics teacher. He walked in to the classroom, and the first thing that he wrote on the board, he didn't even tell us his name. We didn't even know who he was. And he turned up, he went inside the classroom, and he wrote on the board, he said, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And all of us just burst out laughing. This guy hadn't even told us his name yet. But on the board, he wrote, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And now when I look back at that, and as I grew up and hopefully became a bit more mature than I was in high school, I remember thinking about that statement. I'm thinking, how true is that? that when you're not prepared for something, you miss out on un unbelievable opportunities. Now, I'm not saying good things don't happen spontaneously. Sometimes things happen by chance, randomly, etc., with a reason, but when you're prepared, you can capitalize on things in a huge, huge way. Now, I've got a really special bonus clip from Jay on how to not let your dreams die that I think you're gonna really enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three-point landing questions. Time to move from just watching another video to actually taking action in your business and life. So here we go. Question number one, what do you need to take more responsibility for? Number two, whose opinion of you do you care about and need to let go of? And number three, what does true wealth mean to you? A wise person once said, 
The tragedy of life is not death, but what we let die inside of us while we're still alive. We think we're the victims, but actually we should be the suspects because it seems we've killed more dreams than rejection. We've given our ambitions a lifelong sentence. It's trapped deep inside of us. It makes no sense. It's been locked for so long, we've even forgotten its name. Everything we do today feels like it's all the same. Our dream is like a prisoner trapped within us, a vacant listener lacking all vision until someone comes and says, you don't see your own potential. It's like we all need our own intervention, a moment with a mentor, a coach or a guide, the type that sparks a light deep inside our minds. And then they ask us, what's your passion? We shrug it off and say, that stuff doesn't happen. And then they push us a little further, probe us to think deeper. They're always focused on helping us find the hope inside of ourselves. Let me ask you, would you let someone who had incredible potential die right next to you? He would never do that. So why do we let them die right inside of us? That's why the missing link is a coach. A coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear and has you see what you don't want to see so you can be who you have always known you can be. Some of us get given people, some of us get given lessons, but all of us get given moments to change the trajectory of our lives. We can't imagine Kobe Bryant without Phil Jackson. We can't imagine Serena Williams without Patrick Muratoglu. We can't imagine Tom Brady without Alex Guerrero. It's not about what we take, it's about what we leave behind. Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said, they'll forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Picasso said that the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. Coaches can be found in books, mentors can be found in schools, guides will be found throughout life. We don't have to be in the same room to understand their point of view. We don't have to know them for them to show you the way. We just have to have the burning desire to learn. Behind every great person is a coach that we may not even know, a name that we may not recognize, a face that we may never see. A lot of people have gone further than they thought because someone else thought that they could. Raise your standard. Apple at the core, its core value, is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. Not one drop of my self-worth depends on your acceptance of me. If you guys want to learn more from Jay, check out the top 10 rules of success video I did on him. It's right next to me. I think you're going to enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Hey Evan and everyone watching, thank you so much for featuring my ideas and my thoughts. I've been following you for a long, long time.